this now. And here we are, uh, text 16. Uh, Nati Ashnatas tu yogasti na chai kantam anashnata na chati svapna shilasya jagrata naiva charjuna. Synonyms, na, never, ati, too much, ashnata, of one who eats, too, but, yoga, linking with the supreme, asti, there is, na, nor, cha, also, ekantam, overly, anashnata, abstaining from eating, na, nor, cha, also, ati, too much, svapna, shilasya, of one who sleeps, jagrata, or one who keeps night watch, too much, na, not, eva, ever, cha, and, arjuna, O Arjuna, translation. There is no possibility of one's becoming a yoga, O Arjuna, if one eats too much or eats too little, sleeps too much, or does not sleep enough. <clears throat> uh, purport. Regulation of diet and sleep is recommended herein for the yogis. Too much eating means eating more than is required to keep the body and soul together. There is no need for men to eat animals because there is an ample supply of grains, vegetables, fruits, and milk. Such simple food stuff is considered to be in the mode of goodness, according to the Bhagavad Gita. Animal food is for those in the mode of ignorance. Therefore, <clears throat> those who indulge in animal food, drinking, smoking, and eating food which is not first offered to Krishna will suffer sinful reactions because of eating only polluted things. Punjante tet agham papa ye panchati atma karana. Anyone who eats for sense pleasure or cooks for himself, not offering his food to Krishna, eats only sin. One who eats sin and eats more than is allotted to him cannot execute perfect yoga. It is best that one eat only the remnants of foodstuff offered to Krishna. A person in Krishna consciousness does not eat anything which is not first offered to Krishna. Therefore, only the Krishna conscious person can attain perfection in yoga practice. Nor can one who artificially abstains from eating, manufacturing his own personal process of fasting, practice yoga. The Krishna conscious person observes fasting as it is recommended in the scriptures. He does not fast or eat more than is required, and he is thus competent to perform yoga practice. One who eats more than required will dream very much while sleeping, and he must consequently sleep more than is required. One should not sleep more than six hours daily. One who sleeps more than six hours out of 24 is certainly influenced by the mode of ignorance. A person in the mode of ignorance is lazy and prone to sleep a great deal. Such a person cannot perform yoga. Text 17. Yukta hara viharasya, yukta chetasya karma show, yukta svapna vavodasya, yoga bhavati dukaha. Synonyms, yukta regulated ahara, eating, viraharasya. Recreation, yukta regulated, chetasya of one who works for maintenance, karmashu in discharging duties, yukta regulated, swapna ava bodasya, sleep and wakefulness, yoga, practice of yoga, bhavati becomes dukkha, diminishing pains. Translation, he who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation, and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. Purport. Extravagance in the matter of eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, which are demands of the body, can block advancement in the practice of yoga. As far as eating is concerned, it can be regulated only when one is practiced to take and accept prasadam, sanctified food. Lord Krishna is offered, according to Bhagavad Gita 926, vegetables, flowers, fruits, grains, milk, etc. In this way, a person in Krishna consciousness becomes automatically trained not to accept food not meant for human consumption or not in the category of goodness. As far as sleeping is concerned, Krishna, conscious person, is always alert in the discharge of his duties in Krishna consciousness, and therefore any unnecessary time spent sleeping is considered a great loss. Artavyarta kalatvam. The Krishna conscious person cannot bear to pass a minute of his life without being engaged in the service of the Lord. Therefore, his sleeping is kept to a minimum. His ideal in this respect is Srila Rupa Goswami, who was always engaged in the service of Krishna and could not sleep more than two hours a day, sometimes not even that. Haridas Thakur would not even accept prasadam nor even sleep for a moment without finishing his daily routine of chanting with his beads 300,000 names. 
as far as work is concerned, a Krishna conscious person does not do anything which is not connected with Krishna's interest. And thus his work is always regulated and is untainted by sense gratification. Since there is no question of sense gratification, there is no material leisure for a person in Krishna consciousness. And because he's regulated in all his work, speech, sleep, wakefulness, and other bodily activities, there is no material misery for him. Yeah, so everything in the material, you know, that has to do with the bodily activities, you know, so-called enjoyment is also concomitantly material misery. It's kind of like a paradox, you know, you, you want to enjoy, but uh, it, so suffering goes along with that. And you can't separate the two because this material world is a world of duality. Unless you're transcendental to the bodily conception, in other words, if you're doing everything for Krishna instead of for your material body, then there's, then there's going to be suffering. But if you're doing everything for Krishna, then the material miseries don't affect you anymore. Go ahead and read 18. Yara vini yatam chitam admani eva vatishtate nisraha sarva kamebio yukta ite uchate tara. Synonyms. Yara, when. Vini yatam, particularly disciplined. Chitam, the mind and its activities. Atmani, in the transcendence. Eva, certainly. Avatishtate, um, become situated. Uh, nis perha, devoid of desire, sarva, for all kinds of, kamebia, material sense gratification, yukta, well situated in yoga, et thus, uchate, is said to be tara at that time. Translation, when the yogi, by practice of yoga, disciplines his mental activities and becomes situated in transcendence, devoid of all material desires, he is said to be well established in yoga. Purport. The activities of the yogi are distinguished from those of an ordinary person by its characteristic cessation from all kinds of material desires of which sex is the chief. A perfect yogi is so well disciplined in the activities of the mind that he can no longer be disturbed by any kind of material desire. This perfectional stage can automatically be attained by persons in Krishna consciousness as stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam 9, 4, 18 through 20. I'll, I'll read the Sanskrit and then you can read the rest of it. Savai mana Krishna parada vendio vashamsi vaikunti vinarana varnanek, karo harer mandira marjana disu, sutim chakra chuta sat kato dee, mukunda lingalaye darsane de so, tadvrita gatas parshiniga sang gamam, grinam chatat pada saraja sorabe, shimatala sirasanam tadirpite. Pada hare kshetra padanu sarpane, shiro rishikesha padar binad vandane, kaman chadasye natu kama kama yaya, yato tama shloka janad shriya rati. Go ahead. Uh, King Ambarish first of all engaged his mind on the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, then one after another, he engaged his words in describing the transcendental qualities of the Lord, his hands in mopping the temple of the Lord, his ears in hearing the activities of the Lord, his eyes in seeing the transcendental forms of the Lord, his body in touching the bodies of the devotees, his sense of smell and smelling the sense of the lotus flowers offered to the Lord, his tongue in tasting the tulsi leaf offered at the lotus feet of the Lord, his legs in going to places of pilgrimage in the temple of the Lord, his head in offering obeisances unto the Lord, and his desires in executing the mission of the Lord. All these transcendental qualities are quite befitting a pure devotee. This transcendental stage may be inexpressible subjectively by the followers of the impersonalist path, but it becomes very easy and practical for a person in Krishna consciousness, as is apparent in the above description of the engagements of Maharaj Ambarish. Unless the mind is fixed on the lotus feet of the Lord by constant remembrance, such transcendental engagements are not practical. In the devotional service of the Lord, therefore, these prescribed activities are called archana, or engaging all the senses in the service of the Lord. The senses in the mind require engagements. Simple abnegation is not practical. Therefore, for people in general, especially those who are not in the pronounced order of life, transcendental engagement of the senses and the mind, as described above, is the perfect process for transcendental achievement, which is called yukta in the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, I like that word. 
the transcendental stage may be inexpressible <laughs> by those are my bodies, you know, because they 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 can't understand what it means to engage the senses in the service of Krishna because they don't think of Krishna, they think Krishna is Maya. That's why they're called Maya bodies. Text 19. Yata dipo nivata sto nigate sam so pamas mrita yogino yate chitasya yunjato yoga matmana synonyms yata as deepa a lamp nivata sta in a place without wind na does not ingate waver sa this apama comparison shmrita is considered yogina of the yogi yate chitasya whose mind is controlled yunjata constantly engage yoga in meditation, atmana, on transcendence. Translation, as a lamp in a windless place does not waver, so the transcendentalist whose mind is controlled remains always steady in his meditation on the transcendent self. Report, a truly Krishna conscious person always absorbed in transcendence in constant undisturbed meditation on his worshipable Lord is as steady as a lamp in a windless place. Okay, go ahead and read uh, four verses all, all together, I guess. Text uh, 20 through 23. Um, yato paramate chitam nirudam yoga sevaya yatra chaivat manat manam asyan atmani tushyati sukham atyan tikam yatad budi graham atindriyam Veti yatra na chayvayam itas chalata chalati tatvata yam labd hava chaparam labham manyate nad hikam tata yasmin stito na dukhena guru napi vichalyate tam vidyad dukha sam yoga the yogam yoga sams Nitam. Synonyms. Um, can you scroll up a little bit, please? Uh, yatra, in the state of affairs where Uparamate ceased because one feels transcendental happiness. Chitam, mental activities. Nirudam, being restrained from matter. Yoga Sevaya, by performance of yoga. Yatra, in which Cha also, Eva certainly. Atmana, by the pure mind. Atmanam, the self. Pashyan, realizing the position of. Atmani in the self, Tushyati, one becomes satisfied, Sukham, happiness, Atyan Tikam, supreme, Yat, which, Tat, that, Uti, by intelligence, Rahayam, accessible, Atindriyam, a transcendental, Veti, one knows, Yatra, wherein, Na, never, Cha, also, Eva, certainly, Ayam, he, uh, Sita, situated, Chaliti, moves, Tatvata, from the truth, yam, that which, labdva, by attainment, cha also, aparam, any other, labham, gain, anyate, considers, na, never, adhikam, more, tata, than that, yasmin, in which, stita, being situated, na, never, dukhena, by miseries, guna, or guruna, api, even though very difficult, vichalyate, become shaken, tam, that, vijat, you must know, Dukha Sam Yoga of the mis miseries of material contact. Vigyogam, or Vyogam, extermination. Yoga Sam Nitam, called trance and yoga. Translation <clears throat> In the stage of perfection called trance or samadhi, one's mind is completely restrained from the material mental activities by practice of yoga. This perfection is characterized by one's ability to see the self by the pure mind and to relish and rejoice in the self. In that joyous state, one is situated in boundless transcendental happiness realized through transcendental senses. Established thus, one never departs from the truth and upon gaining this, he thinks there is no greater gain. Being situated in such a position, one is never shaken even in the midst of greatest difficulty. This indeed is actual freedom from all miseries arising from material contact. Okay, this is a long purport, so you can read the first paragraph and we'll take turns. Purport. By practice of yoga, one becomes gradually detached from material concepts. This is the primary characteristic of the yoga principle. 
And after this, one becomes situated in trance or samadhi, which means that the yogi realizes the super soul through transcendental mind and intelligence without any of the misgivings of identifying the self with the super self. Yoga practice is more or less based on the principles of the Patanjali system. Some unauthorized commentators try to identify the individual soul with the super soul, and the monists think this to be liberation, but they do not understand the real purpose of the Patanjali system of yoga. There is an acceptance of transcendental pleasure in the Patanjali system, but the monists do not accept this transcendental pleasure out of fear of jeopardizing the theory of oneness. The duality of knowledge and knower is not accepted by the non dualists but in this verse, transcendental pleasure realized through transcendental senses is accepted. And this is corroborated by Patanjali Muni, the famous exponent of the yoga system. The great sage declares in his Yoga Sutras, 433, the chit shakti or internal potency is transcendental. Pusharta means re material religiosity, economic development, sense gratification, and in the at the end, the attempt to become one with the supreme. This quote, oneness with the supreme, end quote, is called kaivalyam by the monist. But according to Patanjali, this kaivalyam is an internal or transcendental potency by which the living entity becomes aware of his constitutional position. In the words of Lord Chaitanya, this state of affairs is called Chaito Darpana Marginum, or clearance of the impure mirror of the mind. This clearance is actually liberation, or Baba Mahadev Agnita Vapanam. The theory of nirvana, or prelimin also preliminary, corresponds with this principle. In the Bhagavatam 2.10.6, this is called Surupena Vivastiti. The Bhagavad Gita also confirms this situation in this verse. Go ahead. After nirvana or material cessation, there is the manifestation of spiritual activities or devotional service to the Lord known as Krishna consciousness. In the words of the Bhagavatam, Svarupena uh, Yavas Iti, this is the real life of the living entity. Maya or illusion is the condition of spiritual life contaminated by material infection. Liberation from this material infection does not mean destruction of the original eternal position of the living entity. Patanjali also accepts this by his words, Kaivalyam svarup atishta va chiti shaktir iti. This chiti shakti or transcendental pleasure is real life. This is confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra 1112 as Ananda Mayo Yasat. This transcendental pleasure is the ultimate goal of yoga. It is easily achieved by execution of devotional service or bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga will be vividly described in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. In the yoga system, as described in this chapter, there are two kinds of samadhi called sampragnata samadhi and asampragnata samadhi. When one, is, when one becomes situated in the transcendental position by various philosophical researches, he is said to have achieved sampragnata samadhi. In the asampragnata samadhi, there is no longer any connection with mundane pleasure, for one is then transcendental to all sorts of happiness derived from the senses. When the yogi is once situated on that transcendental position, he's never shaken from it. Unless the yogi is able to reach this position, he is unsuccessful. Today's so-called yoga practice, which involves various sense pleasures, is contradictory. A yogi indulging in sex and intoxication is a mockery. Even those yogis who are attracted by the city's perfections in the process of yoga are not perfectly situated. If yogis are attracted by the byproducts of yoga, they cannot attain the stage of perfection, which is stated in this verse. Persons, therefore, indulging in the make-show practice of gymnastic feats or cities should know that the aim of yoga is lost in that way. You can read the, the last practice, two paragraphs. The best practice of yoga is Krishna, I'm sorry, in this age is Krishna consciousness, which is not baffling. The Krishna <coughs> conscious person is so happy in his occupation that he does not aspire after any other happiness. 
There are many impediments, especially in this age of hypocrisy, to practicing Hatha yoga, Dhyana yoga, and Jnana yoga. But there is no such problem in executing Karma yoga or Bhakti yoga. As long as the material body exists, one has to meet the demands of the body, namely eating, sleeping, defending, and mating. But a person who is in pure bhakti yoga or in Krishna consciousness does not arouse the senses while meeting the demands of the body. Rather, he accepts the bare necessities of life, making the best use of a bad bargain and enjoys transcendental happiness in Krishna consciousness. He is callous towards incidental occurrences such as accidents, disease, scarcity, and even the death of a most dear relative. But he is always alert to execute his duties in Krishna consciousness or bhakti yoga. Accidents never deviate him from his duty. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita 2.14, Agama Payani or Payino Nitas Chams Titik Sharva Bharat. He endures all such incidental occurrences because he knows that they come and go and do not affect his duties. In this way, he achieves the highest perfection in yoga practice. Yeah, it just reminds me of what they're studying right now at the in the Bhakti Center in New York City. Um, I sent you a link to that if you ever want to join in the morning. Of course, you're you're always working at that time, but uh, it starts at seven ten. If you're ever off or something, you know, snow day or something. But um, they're they're in the first chapter of the tenth canto, and this is an example of how you're always alert to ex execute your duty in Krishna consciousness. And you're callous toward uh, you're callous toward the the uh, acts, incidental occurrences such as accidents, disease, scarcity, even the death of a most dear relative. You know, he's talking about. Let me see if this is still on here. Uh, you know, um, Kamsa the brother of Devaki is driving the newly wedded couple home after the wedding. And so they get, you know, he gets a uh, uh, voice from the sky, which is, you know, you're Kamsa, you know, you don't know, you're just a fool. You don't know that the first, this, the ninth child of this woman will kill you. And so he immediately grabs his sword takes with uh, with his right hand he takes devaki's hair and with his left hand he has a sword and he's going to cut her head off and so but you know yudhisthir uh not yudhisthir um vasudev is just as cool as a cucumber <laughs> i mean anybody else would freak out you newlywed you know and he started reasoning with him, you know, say, you know, you're such a great, you know, soul, you know, you don't want to do some something that would damage your reputation right now in this auspicious uh, uh, thing. And, you know, and then he went through all these different reasons and uh, eventually convinced him by promising him to give all the children to him. And because he was a man of his word, uh, you know, Kamsa agreed. So, okay, you know, I'll let her go for now, you know. So, you know, that's what happened. But Vasudev did his duty and he's always alert to execute his duty. He probably knew that uh, Krishna would not, you know, that, that his, his wife would, would be saved because Krishna was due to be born. That's what the voice in the sky said. But nevertheless, he had to do his duty to protect his wife. And so it's like, it's always... Um, up to us to execute our duty and we can't be dis deterred you know can you imagine the the determination and the krishna conscious the steady krishna conscious of such a person who's not even affected by that if i get a hangnail i can't do things you know but uh you know vasudev was completely uh alert to what his duty was at that moment and he had to act like it was up to him but he knew it was up to krishna so he did what he had to do and he convinced him, but he didn't trust him because he's a demon. And so, you know, but he acted like a, a very good diplomat and uh, with a smiling face, you know, gave him all the reasons why he shouldn't kill his wife. And uh, 
that's it's an amazing story you know there, there aren't people like that people like that don't exist in this society nowadays you know there's no such level-headed uh you know diplomats available in this world but it's all based on krishna consciousness if you're if you're krishna conscious then you can weather any storm you can be in the most difficult situation it doesn't even matter because you're just receiving dictation from krishna the super soul in the heart you know what you have to do and you do it that's it it's just based on you know surrender and service so uh let me read this next one here san is i'm gonna go until um 6 44 because we started a little late that's okay with you yoga near vina chetasa sankalpa prabhavan kamams tvaktva sarvana ches that's mana sai vendriya garmam vini yamya samatata samantata synonyms Ta sa that nishayena with firm determination yogdavya must be practiced yoga yoga system anirvina chetasa without deviation sankalpa mental speculations prabhavan born of kamam material desires tvaktva giving up sarvan all asheshata completely manasa by the mind eva certainly indriyagamam full set of senses Vinayamya, regulating samantata from all sides. Translation, one should engage oneself in the practice of yoga with determination and faith and not be deviated from the path. One should abandon, without exception, all material desires born of mental speculation and thus control the sense, all the senses on all sides by the mind. Um, I'll read the first paragraph and you can read the next two paragraphs. The yoga practitioner should be determined and should patiently prosecute the practice without deviation. One should be sure of success at the end and pursue this course with great perseverance, not becoming discouraged if there's any delay in the attainment of success. Success is sure for the rigid practitioner. Regarding the bhakti yoga, Rupa Goswami says, Utsahan Nishya Dharyat Tat Tat Karma Pravartanat Sangha Tyagat Satovrite Sadvir Bhakti Prasidyati. If one can execute the process of bhakti yoga successfully with full hearted enthusiasm, perseverance, and determination by following the prescribed duties in the association of devotees and by completely engaging completely in the activities of goodness, Upadesh Amrita 3. Now, just I just want to stop, pause here for a second because they make a really good point, which I was pointing out at the beginning of this uh, when I started talking to you about reading. You know, you, you can't uh, be deviated from uh, from mental speculation that's born. Uh, material desires are born of mental speculation. You know, when you're reading, you have to read exactly what is coming from the spiritual world and not put any of your own material desires on anything that's coming off the page. And that way you can control your senses. And uh, it's really, really important, you know what the one of the principles of lord chaitanya's uh uh eight six principles of surrender is is to engage oneself completely in uh in uh, uh surrendering to krishna's desires and not anything else not our own desires so if you avoid your own mind and uh follow krishna's indication with the lord in the heart and the spiritual master without then you you're you're your aim is one and you're not uh, deviated by different branches of your mental desires that are always confusing everyone and it doesn't have anything to do with what krishna wants so we should always be on the path it's a straight and narrow path and uh it's very easy once you actually get on that path and then you won't you'll never be disturbed by any kind of anxiety anymore because you know you're you're on the right path so go ahead and write, read the next two paragraphs. As for determination, one should follow the example of the sparrow who lost her eggs in the waves of the ocean. The sparrow laid her eggs on the shore of the ocean, but the big ocean carried away the eggs on its waves. The sparrow became very upset and asked the ocean to return her eggs. The ocean did not even consider her appeal. So the sparrow decided to dry up the ocean. 
She began to pick out the water in her small beak and everyone laughed at her for her impossible determination. The news of her activity spread and at last Garuda, the gigantic bird carrier of Lord Vishnu heard it. He became compassionate toward his small sister bird and so he came to see the sparrow. Garuda was very pleased by the determination of the small sparrow and he promised to help. Thus Garuda at once asked the ocean to return her eggs lest he himself take up the work of the sparrow. The ocean was frightened at this and returned the eggs. Thus, the sparrow became happy by the grace of Garuda. Similarly, the practice of yoga, especially bhakti yoga in Krishna consciousness, may appear to be a very difficult job. But if anyone follows the principles with great determination, the Lord will surely help, for God helps those who help themselves. Yeah, it's like, you know, if you're, once you're in Krishna consciousness, it's very easy, but in the beginning, it's very difficult. It seems very hard. But once you're surrendering to Krishna, then it becomes easier and easier because Krishna helps you along the path. Text 25. Sanai shanar oparamed buddhya driti grihitaya atma samsta manakritva nakinchit apichintayet. Synonyms. Shanai, gradually. Shanai, step by step. Uparamet. One should hold back buddhya by intelligence. Dritigrihitaya, carried by conviction, atma samstam, placed in transcendence, mana, the ma mind, kritva, making na, not, kinshit, anything else, api, even, chintayat, should think of. Translation, gradually, step by step, one should become situated in trance by means of intelligence sustained by, the full, by full conviction, and thus the mind should be fixed on the self alone and should think of nothing else. Purport. By proper conviction and intelligence, one should gradually cease sense activities. This is called the pratyahara. The mind being controlled by conviction, meditation, and cessation from the senses should be situated in trance or samadhi. At that time, there is no longer any danger of becoming engaged in the material conception of life. In other words, although one is involved with matter, as long as the material body exists, one should not think about sense gratification. One should think of no pleasure aside from the pleasure of the Supreme Self. The state is easily attained by directly practicing Krishna consciousness. Go ahead. Text 26. <laughs> Synonyms, yata, wherever, nischalati, becomes very agitated, mana, the mind, chanchalam, flickering, astiram, unsteady, tata, tata, from there, niyamya, regulating, etat, this, atmani, and the self, eva, certainly, vasham, control, nayet, must bring under. Translation. From wherever the mind wanders due to its flickering and unsteady nature, one must certainly withdraw it and bring it back under the control of the self. Purple. <clears throat> the nature of the mind is flickering and unsteady, but a self-realized yogi has to control the mind. The mind should not control him. One who controls the mind and therefore the senses as well is called Goswami or Swami. And one who is controlled by the mind is called Godasa or the servant of the senses. Goswami knows the standard of sense happiness. In transcendental sense happiness, the senses are engaged in the service of Rishikesha, or the supreme owner of the senses, Krishna. Serving Krishna with purified senses is called Krishna consciousness. That is the way of bringing the senses under full control. What is more, that is the highest perfection of yoga practice. Okay, we'll read one more because it's getting pretty close to time to end here. Text 27. Prashanta manasam hienam yoginam sukamuttamam upaiti santarajasam brahmabhutam akamasam. Synonyms. Prashanta, peaceful, situated, fixed on the lotus feet of Krishna. Manasam, whose mind, he, certainly, enam, this, yoginam, so yogi, Shukam, happiness, Uttamam, the highest. Upaiti, attains, Shantarajasam, his passion pacified. 
Brahma Bhutam, liberation by identification with the absolute, Akalma Sam, freed from all past sinful reactions. Translation, yogi, the yogi whose mind is fixed on me, verily attains the highest perfection of transcendental happiness. He is beyond the mode of passion. He realizes his qualitative identity with the Supreme, and thus he is freed from all reactions to past deeds. Purport. Brahma Bhuta is a state of being freed from the material contamination situated in the transcendental service of the Lord. Mad Bhakti Param Bhagavad Gita 1854. One cannot remain on the, in the quality of Brahman or the absolute until one's mind is fixed on the lotus feet of the Lord. Sava mana Krishna paradavano vindeo. To be always engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord or to remain in Krishna consciousness is to be factually liberated from the mode of passion and all material contamination and all freedom from sins too, from all your past misdeeds. Such a deal, you know. Do uh, you have any questions or anything? No, I mean, once, once again, I mean, it really feels like, um, you know, Krishna's repeating the same general idea over and over in different ways, really hammering it home to Arjuna here. You know, For sure. Yeah, well, you know, he was ready to repeat the whole Bhagavad Gita again if he didn't understand. He said, have you understood what I said? Are you uh, clear? Are you free from doubt? He said, yeah, I'm ready to act as your, you know, my mind is free from doubt. But otherwise, he would have said the whole thing again, talked another 45 minutes and repeated the same thing that he said before. But, you know, however long it takes, you know, sometimes it actually says in the Bhagavatam, it says you should read, you should uh Read Atichuram, which means for a long time. <laughs> That's why I read all the time. I, I, I can't get enough of it because it, it really frees you from your all different kinds of motivations. You know, we're all materially motivated. So if we get off of that by focusing on what Krishna wants instead of what our teeny brain wants, then we're on the right path. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll see you again on Wednesday. All right. Talk to you later. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.